That's where we're actually going to begin tonight's newscast. Uh, businesses now, not only here in the capital region, but across the country, are looking for answers now after their uh, payroll service basically shut down. News 10's Juliana Bruno is live now in Clifton Park with what we know so far. Juliana? Lydia and John, I'm in the parking lot where the building was that was home base for my payroll HR. Now, their doors are closed, and that means that over 4,000 clients across the country are without paychecks for their employees, and that includes the shop restaurant in Troy. A little bit of disbelief, I think, is the biggest. It's that first shock. That's how Barton's employees felt when they first saw their bank accounts after my payroll HR abruptly closed their doors. Looking at your bank account and seeing a negative balance is it's embarrassing in a sense. You know, I woke up yesterday with a dollar in my account. Yesterday morning, the shop's staff woke up to reverse debit transactions from last week's payroll of the entire amount to an unknown third party labeled bank. They spent the past 24 hours hoping my payroll would right their wrong. But then we woke up again this morning to a second time the same amount transaction um, being withdrawn. From everyone's bank account. So everyone's been doubly hit. So now it's as if his employees worked for free and then paid to work. My payroll HR's Facebook page has been deleted, and their parent company, ValueWise's website, is gone. And when we tried calling uh, my payroll HR, we got an automated message telling us that no one could speak to us at that time. Now, I also spoke to a spokesperson for the Better Business Bureau who told me that right now they don't even have a rating on file for my payroll or their parent company, Value Wise. So, in order for them to look into it further, they need complaints from people affected. And to find out how to file one of those, you can go to our website, news10.com. This man has stolen money across the nation. Robert Bertram and his business partner Robert Cohen have no idea where money that's supposed to go to their employees is and if they'll ever see it again. It seems to be a malevolent act. The men are co owners of a senior caregiving service based in Albany. They're one of 4,000 companies across the nation hit after My Payroll HR reversed deposits into their employees' accounts. It sounds like something you'd hear on a movie. <laughs> some uh, book that you're reading, you wouldn't think that it strikes so close to home. We thought it was an isolated incident uh, until the calls kept coming. And they're making sure all those concerned calls from their employees are taken care of. How important is losing one paycheck for you? Uh, it's, for the girls, it's a big deal. The owner spent hours driving across the capital region, hand delivering money from their internal account to their employees. The hemorrhaging of finances is still ongoing. Like so many Americans, a paycheck is make or break. With rent due and her child's birthday tomorrow, Brooke Taney has to give her child bad news. And I have to tell them, sorry, but essentially somebody stole mommy's money. I was just checking my bank account all day today, just looking for that money to be returned. I did not think that they were going to try again. This is something that we in 22 years never experienced and, and quite frankly, never even imagined what happened. Wendy Slavkin is the general counsel for Cache Financial Services. She says her company is out $26 million after My Payroll HR out of Clifton Park notified clients it couldn't process payroll checks. My Payroll HR used Cache as a third party direct deposit partner for 12 years. Slavkin says normally employers get the money to My Payroll HR, then sends Cache Financial the money so they can direct deposit to employee bank accounts. But in this case, Cache says $26 million they were supposed to receive instead went to a Pioneer bank account owned by My Payroll HR. That's how the fraud occurred. So a lot of those payrolls that were paid were payrolls that they falsely set up. In an effort to get their money back, Cache tried taking money from people's accounts, which many saw as a double whammy of sorts. But as a company, they decided to return the money to the hardworking men and women across the country and instead bear the brunt of the $26 million loss. So it was our money that was used to pay these thousands of employees. They say the man they believe is responsible, Michael Mann, has been in the wind. They say the FBI is looking into the funds at Pioneer Bank, but wouldn't confirm if the $26 million is still there. We're hoping that Michael Mann has not gotten access to those funds and and left the country. 
Tonight, the FBI's investigation is ongoing and they continue to ask business owners to come forward if they've suffered any financial loss as a result of the alleged activity of my payroll HR. State police also telling us today their investigation continues. But as far as we know, CEO Michael Mann is still nowhere to be found. And we, like many others, are curious as to where he and the $35 million could be or why at the very least has he not released a statement of some kind. We started by calling a few numbers associated with his name and found at least two had been disconnected. His personal cell, however, went to his voicemail, but our calls have not been returned. We also found the deed to his home in Saratoga County and paid a visit there earlier this week. We stopped by the home of Michael Mann today, but no one was around and the neighbors that we spoke to say it appears that they up and left within the last week or so, making mention of trying to sell the property and any ongoing construction here at the home has also noticeably come to a halt. A search of his name at the county clerk's office also uncovered that he and his wife Kim once owned several properties in the Mechanicville Half Moon area, but sold them within the last few years. Once again, we stopped by his offices here in Clifton Park, but again, we found lights off, doors locked, but we did, however, run into a manager with Pioneer Bank. He didn't have much to say, but he did tell us he too was looking for Michael Mann. Samantha Damasio, News 10, ABC. It's going to begin tonight with new details coming in. Pioneer Bank reporting fraudulent activity in the Securities Exchange Commission now. This all connected to that My Payroll HR saga. The Albany-based bank reporting a potential exposure in the tens of millions of dollars. News 10's Peter Eliopoulos sat down with the bank's president and is in the studio with more. Yeah, the bank's president says it's tough to tell exactly how much money was lost. It'll take forensic auditors to get to the bottom of it and figure out where all that money went, but it could be up to $36 million. We uncovered some uh, fraudulent activity very recently and uh, with a client's account. And at the end of the day, we were dealing with a, a, a potential loss. The client, My Payroll HR, the Clifton Park payroll company that folded last week, leaving thousands across the country without a paycheck. News 10 has learned that nearly $36 million meant for payroll last week was instead fraudulently moved to an account at Pioneer Bank. Tom Amell is the president and CEO of the bank. He says at least some of that money is gone. He filed this report to the Securities and Exchange Commission yesterday indicating my payroll HR had a $16 million loan with Pioneer, which is now in default, and an additional $19 million of deposit activity. You know, worst case scenario, if, if um, it could be $36 million loss if we we lost all the deposit monies and the, uh, in the in the loan situation. It could be upwards of that, and that's what that, that states. Amel says the bank has a lot of capital, and this won't impact them at all. He feels badly for the thousands who didn't get their paycheck last week. We checked back in to My Payroll HR and parent company ValueWise's offices to see if there was any activity. A corner office still had papers in it, but everything else was dark. We also went to CEO Michael Mann's house on the Great Sacandaga Lake. No one was home, but neighbors tell News 10 he had inquired about trying to sell the house. Amel hopes either he comes forward or authorities can track him down. The only thing that greeted us were two large dogs. Despite two cars in the garage, neither Michael Mann nor his wife Kim answered the door. Mr. Mann, anyone home? Someone was home, but we'll get to that later. Their waterfront property on the Great Sacandaga Lake under construction. Kim was very flustered when she was talking to me on the phone. She said, we might have to sell the house. Something major's happened. You might find out about it. Terrence Anthony yeah. is the building inspector um, so for the town of Edinburgh. He's been in, been in touch with Kim Mann for weeks about the permits for their addition. Last speaking on September 6th. That's the same day that tens of thousands of employees around the country didn't receive their payroll checks from Michael Mann's Clifton Park company, My Payroll HR. It was a major life-changing event that happened to her, is what she said, something that blindsided her. Around $35 million is still missing, some still without their paychecks. The FBI raiding the man's home yesterday evening, trying to get to the bottom of what happened. Meanwhile, Kim confiding in the building inspector. She just said that she had uh, a fear that someone would come and uh, harm her husband. Anthony hasn't spoken to Kim since. We still don't know what Michael Mann looks like, but workers at this local diner describe him as weighing nearly 300 pounds. Black hair slicked back and always wearing a suit. 
He apparently ordered takeout from here almost every night until September 6th. Many in town wondering where he is, but someone was home. We went back to the house at the end of the day to check in, only to find state troopers there, telling us the mans didn't want us on their property. Tonight, that investigation continues. At the Capitol, lawmakers now crafting legislation to protect workers in the event of fraud by their payroll company. This is in response to the sudden closing of My Payroll HR in Clifton Park. News 10 Capitol correspondent Karina Campobianca has that story. After the sudden closure of My Payroll HR, Senate Democrats have a new set of bills aimed to protect workers. In a statement, Senate Majority Leader Stuart Cousins said the recent situation has severely damaged our confidence in the entire payroll industry. The first bill on the agenda would set criminal penalties for those who purposely misappropriate payroll and payroll tax funds. Another bill would allow workers to go after payroll processing companies for up to three times the value of their normal paycheck if it's missed due to fraud. Man's attorney confirming to us this evening he's cooperating with the U.S. Attorney's Office. This is really the first time we've heard from the elusive executive since this all started two weeks ago. The federal investigation of how $35 million went missing continues tonight. The FBI raiding Michael Mann's house on the Great Sacandaga Lake. But today, we spoke off camera with Mann's attorney, who told us he contacted the U.S. Attorney's Office two weeks ago when this first happened. He says Mann has voluntarily and proactively met with and is cooperating with the U.S. Attorney's Office in order to fully address the consequences of recent events. He also told us Mann is in the area. He's not absconded or disappeared, and any report to the contrary is flat out wrong. And we'll start tonight with that breaking news on Michael Mann. He appeared in federal court today in Albany. News 10's Peter Eliopoulos joining us live now with the latest developments on that. Peter. Yeah, Mann is, is accused of committing $70 million in bank fraud. The Albany FBI White Collar Crimes Task Force uh, investigating Mann here, filing a complaint against him here at the federal courthouse. Now, those agents that were interviewing Mann, they did that uh, over the past few weeks where he apparently told them he accepted responsibility for his conduct and wishes to confess to a fraudulent scheme that, again, he's been running for over the course of 10 years. So how did this scheme work? The complaint alleges Mann set up shell companies whose only purpose was to be used in the alleged fraud. He then obtained loans and lines of credit for, business, for businesses based on non-existent collateral. Now this all coming to light when his company, My Payroll HR, suddenly closed down a little more than two weeks ago, affecting thousands across the country. Now in that case, around $35 million went missing. Mann telling investigators, though, he obtained twice that over the years, not paying any of it back adding that he did it because of, quote, business and financial pressures. We spoke with Mann's attorney on the phone moments ago. Within a few days, Michael voluntarily met with the U.S. Attorney's Office regarding the facts and circumstances that resulted in today's allegations. Michael has been cooperating with law enforcement and regulatory agencies since that initial meeting and will continue to do so in order to fully and accurately detail what occurred. Now, back when that meeting happened a couple of weeks ago here, Mann surrendered his passport to federal authorities. He's out on bond right now. He's required to pay that bond of $200,000 by the end of the week. It's the latest development in the My Payroll HR saga. Cache Financial Services out of Southern California alleging Michael Mann stole at least $26 million that was supposed to go to Cache. Cache worked with My Payroll HR for 11 years, handling the direct deposits for thousands of clients across the country. Under normal circumstances, My Payroll HR collects money from employers, sends it to Cache for processing, and then it's direct deposited to employees. But in this case, Cache says man manipulated the wiring instructions, sending the money to his accounts at Pioneer Bank and other places, calling this a racketeering scheme. The lawsuit alleges Mann's conduct was willful, wanton, malicious, egregious, and done in conscious disregard of Cache's rights. They're seeking damages of at least $26 million, plus interest. Once all the employees get their money back, Cache will be the, the main victims here. 